Hi friends, we'll see hierarchical agglomerative clustering commonly known as HAC for data warehouse and mining. HAC starts with one cluster. Individual items in its own cluster are iteratively merged until all items belong to one cluster. It follows a bottom-up approach where the clusters are merged together and pictorially dendrograms are used to represent the HAC. Now, HAC can be represented using three techniques that is the single nearest distance or single linkage or known as a single link, complete farthest distance or the complete linkage or commonly known as a complete link, average average distance or average linkage or commonly known as an average link. Now what are these three linkages? The single linkage, this is the distance between the closest members of the two clusters. Min is used to find the distance. Complete linkage, this is the distance between the members that are the farthest apart. Max is used to find the complete linkage. Average linkage, as the name suggests, this method involves looking at the distance between all pairs and averages of all the distances this is also called as unweighted pair group mean averaging. We'll be seeing all these three. In this presentation, we'll be seeing the single linkage with an example. Two more presentations will be followed for complete linkage and average linkage. Now before starting with an example of HSE, let's see what is a dendrogram. Dendrogram is a tree-like structure which represents the hierarchical technique. The individual items are known as leaves and when these two individual items are clubbed together they form a root and these two individual items or more are known as clusters. A cluster is at a level 1 is the merger of its child cluster at level i plus 1. This is a diagrammatical representation of a dendrogram. A and B are the individual root items you will see C and D similarly over here and E and F. When these two leaves are joined together, they form one cluster. Similarly, you can see we have clusters over here. And when I join C, D, E together, then they form one bigger cluster. And then a major cluster over here. And then a final cluster is formed with all of them joining together over here. This is how a complete cluster is formed. Now let's take an example. Find the cluster using a single link technique. Just read this carefully. This we have to implement using a single link technique and we have to use the Euclidean distance and draw the dendrogram for the same. We have P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6 as six item sets given. The two coordinates for which we need to work on using a single link technique is X and Y. The first step that we need to follow <coughs> is to draw the plot. That is, we draw a graph of P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6 for the X and Y coordinates on a two-dimensional graph. Simple two-dimensional graph is plotted. P1 is this, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6. Now this graph is needed because as we go further to form the clusters, it will help us how the clusters are formed. So initially for the data given, we draw this chart. Now next is we have to use the Euclidean distance and create the distance matrix. The Euclidean distance formula is between the two points, it is square root of x minus a square plus x minus b square. And then what happens this x and y are the two coordinates. So let's start with finding the distance between P1 and P2. The values of P1 and P2 are 0 0.40, 0 0.53 is a P1, 0 0.22 and 0 0.38 is the coordinates of P2. So the values are substituted in the formula. So it is square root of 0 0.40 minus 0 0.22, the square plus 0 0.53 minus 0 0.38 square. So finally, the output that we get the result is 0 0.23. So the distance between P1 and P2 using the Euclidean distance we get the value 0 0.23. 23. 
Similarly, Euclidean distance between all the points is calculated and we get a distance matrix over here. The distance matrix is given as on the upper side and the lower side we get the similar values. So we have put the values on the lower bound of the matrix and this is the value we got. So distance between P1 and P2 is put over here. The diagonal of the matrix is 0. Now after we found the distance matrix, we need to work further on. So what we do? We need to find the clusters. So from the distance matrix, we need to find the minimum element which is there. So 0.11 is the minimum value which is present in this particular matrix. So 0.11 is a value between the points P3 and P6. So this is our first cluster formed. So on this graph, we will plot P3 and P6 as one cluster and a dendrogram is formed between P3 and P6. It is represented as 3 and 6. Now after I have plotted the dendrogram and the graph with the cluster 3 and 6, I need to recalculate the distance. Now the distance matrix has to be reworked on. Now the distance have to be calculated how? Now P3 and P6, these are the two clusters which are formed over here and it is we can mark these two also over here because they represent the same. Now let's see how the distances are recalculated. Now this is a simple link problem. So the formula is minimum of distance between point P3, P6 to the reference points where all we are taking. So if you see here we have to check the minimum of P3 to P1 which is this and P6 to P1 which is 0 0.23. So the minimum of P3, P1, 0.22, P3, sorry, P6, P1, 0.23. So we need to get the minimum. So we get the value over here. So you get 0 0.22. Now to update the distance matrix for P3, P6 with the point P2. So P3, P2, P6, P2. So the value is 0 0.15, 0 0.25 and it is the updated value is 0 0.15. To obtain the distance matrix from the point P3, P6 that is this cluster to the point P4. So we say P3, P4, P6, P4 and the value of the point P3, P4 is taken which is put over here and P6, P4 is taken which is 0 0.22. So the minimum of 0 0.15 and 0 0.22 is 0 0.15. So this is the updated distance value. Now we have to again calculate the value between P3, P6. This is this cluster to the point P5. So it is P3 to P5 value and P6 to P5 value the minimum should be taken. So it is 0 0.28, 0 0.39. So the minimum value is 0 0.29. To 8. The distance matrix values we have got. Now we have to substitute those values in the distance matrix. So P3, P6 you will see this is the combined cluster which is formed over here and these are the updated values which are shown. So this is the updated distance matrix for the cluster P3 and P6. Now we go further with it. Now again we find the minimum distance. From this lower bound of the matrix, we find the minimum value. So we get the minimum value as 0 0.14. 0 0.14 is a cluster between P2 and P5. So we again need to check out that it is for the cluster P2 and P5. So we need to plot. We say, I'm sorry, it is 3 and 6 is one cluster and 2 and 5 is the second cluster formed and here the dendrogram is shown 3 to 6 and 2 to 5. Now we update the distance matrix. Now the distance matrix has to be updated for the cluster P2 and P5. So P2 to P1 and P5 to P1 distance and minimum of it has to be taken. So minimum of P2 to P1 distance is 0 0.23 from the matrix we can take P5 to P1 the value is 0 0.34 the updated matrix the value is taken and minimum of 0 0.23 and 0 0.34 is 0 0.23.
Now we have to update the distance matrix between P2, P5, this is the new cluster formed and this is the cluster which was formed with the previous calculation. So we need to calculate. So the value from distance between P2 to P3, P6 that is a new cluster and P5 to P3, P6 is put over here. So we have to find the minimum distance between 0 0.15, 0 0.28, so value is 0 0.15. Now we need to calculate the value from this new cluster to the point P4. So it is P2 to P4 value is 0 0.20, P5 to P4 value is 0 0.29 and the minimum of the two is 0 0.24. This is how we get the updated distance matrix for the cluster P2 to P5. So these are the new values that we have got. This is the new cluster which is created and these are the new distance matrix values for this cluster. Now again we need to find the minimum. You will see the two minimum values existing over here but we go as this comes first in our matrix so we take 0 0.15 which forms a cluster between P2, P5 and P3, P6 so this cluster is taken and it is again plotted onto the graph. So how do we do it? This cluster is used over here so the cluster formed is 3 and 6 over here, first cluster, the second cluster formed is 2 and 5 and the third cluster which is formed is combina combination of these two together, so it is 3, 6 and 2, 5. Now we have to recalculate the distance matrix again. So the updated distance matrix will be the new cluster which is formed is P2, P5, P3, P6, so their distance has to be calculated with the point P1. So P2, P5 with P1 the minimum distance has to be find, found out and P3, P6 and P1 the value has to be found out. If you want to see the values we have to say minimum of 0 0.23 and 0 0.22. So the value is 0 0.22 and the second updated value is P2 to P5, P3, P6 this is the new cluster with the point P4. So the values are 0 0.20, 0 0.15, the output is 0 0.15 and the updated value that we get from the new cluster P2, P5, P3, P6, P2, P5, P3, P6 is 0 0.22 and 0 0.15. Now with this we again find out the minimum value. The minimum value is over here. So this cluster is formed between P4 and P2, P5, P3 and P6. So we need to again plot it onto the graph. So this is 3 and 6 over here, 2 and 5 and then these both join together to form one cluster which is shown over here like this and then the fourth one is formed. So the fourth cluster is formed like this. This is what is shown over here. Now we have to update the distance matrix again. So P2, P5, P3 and P6 with P4. So it has to be clubbed together. So P2, P5, P3, P6 with the value P1 the value is 0 0.22 and P4 to P1 the value is 0 0.37 from the updated matrix and the minimum of 2 is 0 0.22. So these values are updated over here. This is the new cluster formed in the distance matrix. This is the updated distance matrix and 0 0.22 is the value which is put over here. Now the last cluster remaining is P1 and P2, P5, P3, P6, P4. So by default it forms the complete cluster. So this is the first cluster. This is the second cluster. This is the third one. This is the fourth one and the last one which takes the point 1 also in it and it forms the complete cluster. You can see this in the dendrogram. This is how the agglomerative clustering helps us to combine the individual clusters together and form one big cluster. Thank you.